Hi booktube, this is Juan from Just One Reader. Welcome back to another Friday Reads video in which I will tell you about the books that I have been reading this week and what I will be reading uh, the following week, hopefully. So, I have to tell you, for this video I don't have a lot because it essentially comes down to one huge volume of literature, uh, historical fiction, which is Hilary Mantel's Chunkster, The Mirror and the Light. This is, of course, the final uh, installment in the Thomas Cromwell trilogy, right after Bring Up the Bodies. Um, so this book picks up right after Bring Up the Bodies, um, which is the execution of this woman who used to be, uh, well, she was the queen at that point in time. Um, her name was Anne, Anne Boleyn, and um, we, we, we start the novel, The Mirror and the Light, right there and then. And I really loved the beginning of this book. It was so spellbinding and so beautifully written. Hilary Mantel is maybe not my kind of writer. She's not a writer that I particularly personally resonate with. She's just not my kind of writer. Um, but I have to say that excuse me, if you, if you can hear any noises going on in the background, I have to say that even though I see that this is not my kind of writer, she can write. And when, when Hilary Mantel writes well, she writes better than anyone else or m most people. And there, there were moments in Bring Up the Bodies and Wolf Hall where I found that as frustrating as the story could be at times and as confusing and um, yeah, confusing as it could often be, the writing was just wonderful. And reading or starting to read The Mirror and the Light, I am encountering the same issue again, which is not her issue. It's just an issue or something that has come up with this book's and myself. So this is my uh, conflict reading these books. Essentially, uh, well, I have to say, I, I have read the first three chapters of the book, which is the first part of the book. The book is divided into different parts, and each part is made up of different chapters. And I have read the first big part or section, um, which is roughly this. So the first 250 pages. And I have to say that so far, I feel like this experience, this reading experience for me has been very divided. Essentially, I have two categories of experiences while reading this book. The first category of experiences is made of experiences where I am laughing, I am enjoying myself, I love the characters, I am fascinated by the characters, I think the writing is splendid and I read passages over and over again because I feel like, how can someone write this well? The other, <laughs> the, the, the other set of experiences or a category of experiences is basically moments where I want to kill myself because this book becomes very, very confusing frustrating, hard, difficult, very complex, um, very laborious, very difficult to get through. It's hard for me to understand what is actually going on. Um, I know that eventually I will understand, but, but it, it is frustrating that while I am reading, I feel like sometimes I'm just not following um, as well as I should be, probably. And um, sometimes I feel like I am reading conversations or scenes or dialogue that feels a little pointless to me. And not pointless, but uninteresting. Um, and I think this is just an essential conflict that I will always have with these books because I am not the target audience for these books. I'm just not, not the right reader. I mean, I... I I didn't know any of this English history before reading these books. I am not very, um, very well read or informed. 
um, regarding this part of uh, this period of history in England. So I. I feel very confused, um, but I don't think that's the problem. I don't think the problem with me reading these books is that I don't know the history. Knowing the history would help, but I feel like the problem is more with the storytelling. And this is something that I was discussing with Leo from A Little Book Life, who is also reading this book, and we are sort of buddy reading it. I mean, we are, we are not formally buddy reading it, but we are reading it at the same time, and we are pretty much talking about it on a daily basis. So I, I feel like we're pretty much body reading it. Um, so something that I was talking to him about was that for me, I feel like this books and this one in particular, um, this one has felt very much like, um, like the parts that I struggle with feel more um, they feel stronger as history and as a almost nonfiction text instead of storytelling. Sadly, that is the case for me. Um, that doesn't mean to say that I don't like Hilary Mantel's storytelling. What I am saying is that there are some points in the book, in this one in particular, where I feel like she almost forgets that this is a novel that has to be told in a compelling enough way and I feel like the storytelling becomes weaker and the laborious, scholarly, studious, um, historical part comes in very strongly, you know what I mean? So uh, this is just like a feeling that I get every so often, but I am still very much enjoying this book. I know that Hilary Mantel is a writer whom I can trust, and I know that I will probably enjoy this novel much, much more. But so far, there are, like I said, it's a mix. It's a mix. Great experiences of this is wonderful, and then experiences of, oh my God, I want to kill myself. This is so uninteresting and, and hard. But I know that it will, it will, it will come to, a, um, to fruition, you know? It's, it, 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 it'll come to a good end, I hope. Um, now, because I was struggling with this one, I decided that I needed to read something uh, light and something fun, something completely enjoyable. And so I read Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores by Jen Campbell. This is a charming, perfect book, perfect for what I was needing at the moment. This is a collection of anecdotes from booksellers and it's just exactly what it is, uh, what it says on the on the title. It's weird things that customers say in bookstores and you can't believe that people can be so uh, quirky and so dumb sometimes and so ballsy sometimes. And, and it's just a mixture of very different kinds of experiences, but, but I loved it. It was hilarious. I enjoyed myself so much reading this. I read this over uh, two days. It's very, very easy to get through. And if you are reading something hard, like The Mirror and the Light, um, I would strongly recommend uh, reading something like this um, alongside the other book, just to keep things moving, you know? So I gave this four stars, it was just really wonderful. And because it feels like I will be reading this for quite some time now, um, I thought maybe I would do the same thing that I did with uh, with Jen Campbell. I thought I would read some other books uh, that are more um, fun and charming and something that is easy to get in and out of, just so I can read a, a wider variety while continuing on with The Mirror and the Light. So I, I have two options. Um, I still haven't really made up my mind, but I have these two options. This one, is, they're both nonfiction, by the way. This is Word by Word, The Secret Life of Dictionaries by Corey Stamper. 
I saw this recommended by Brita Bowler um, a while ago now. It was it was quite some time ago. Um, but she talked wonders about this book. And this is, um, I don't even really remember what it is because I bought it s such a long time ago. But it is um, an account of how dictionaries are made um, that is supposed to be really funny and really clever. And it's supposed to be perfect for uh, grammar, Nazis, and people who really enjoy l learning about language and what language can do. So this sounds pretty wonderful. Um, and then the other one is The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bithel. Bethel? Bithel? I don't know. The Diary of a Bookseller, which is a book that I bought in London at Boyle's. And it is uh, sort of similar sounding to this. This is about uh, Sean Blythel, a bookshop owner, bibliophile, and misanthrope extraordinaire. He lives and works in the bookshop, Wigtown, whose crooked shelves contain anything from a 16th century Bible to a first edition Agatha Christie. Um, this is supposed to be honest hilarious and very like dry, like a very sarcastic uh, sense of humor that I absolutely love. And uh, you know, it's filled, it, it's filled with eccentric customers and employees and anecdotes. So this and this will probably help me uh, continue along with the mirror and the light and hopefully this will not disappoint. So, thanks for watching and please let me know what you've been reading. Um, if you have read this or are reading this, um, please let me know what you think. Um, I, I, I feel like I need to talk with people who are reading this um, just to feel like I am not alone um, because it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Just One Reader and I will see you next week.